I'm Doug McKenzie. And I'm John Ward. And we're the co-hosts of the ABCs of IBC podcast. Come join us as we share our unique perspective on the infinite banking concept as the creator, Nelson Nash, intended. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back, Kata. How's it going, John? I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. Yeah. Um, enjoying the last few days of fall. <laughs> yeah, when is it technically winter? Uh, I think like December 20th or okay. December 21st. Yeah, we still got a little bit of time, but <laughs> not yeah. much. Yeah, not much. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, today, we well, we're going to again talk about a section becoming your own banker called what if I'm uninsurable? What, what page? Thank you for that. Page 82. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, in that story, you know, there's, it's this, a good question. We get that one a lot. Well, yeah. Yeah. And you know, people even have like, before they come to us, they're already concerned, right? And I even had uh, a prospective client that, you know, applied, did all that, and because it takes some time, and then there was some questions because they didn't give me all the information up front, they get, they get nervous. I don't know what it is, but they're nervous that, you know, they don't want to be rejected, I guess, and, right? And eventually, she just disappeared. You know, because they do think like, wow, what if I'm uninsurable? But mm -hmm. uninsurable just means that, um, you know, the insurance company doesn't want to insure, you know, because of your health rating uh, or issues or what have you. It's not they, personal. No, they're just, it's they, a, you know, they're making a business decision, right? And it's all stats actuarial based. Yeah, and so they don't want you to fall outside of the norm, and that's what they're basing this data on, right, is that you're going to potentially die earlier, that there's no guarantees. You know, even they can be wrong about that, but they're playing the numbers, right? Yeah, and that's <laughs> when they when they insure across, I mean, oftentimes millions of people yeah. or hundreds of thousands of people – they know they're taking the risk that the most perfectly healthy person ever could get hit by a car tomorrow, but it's not, you know, it's of not, course, yeah. it's not likely to happen. Um, but they do know that it's more likely that, you know, someone that's a heavy smoker is, is more likely to have health issues than someone that's not. Right. So they take stuff like that into account. Right? But they even, and, they even let those heavy smokers <laughs> get a policy. They do. You're just going <laughs> to pay more for it. Yeah. yeah right. Exactly. Yeah, you're going to get like a table rating, but right. Yep. Yeah, it's not personal, but sometimes it does happen. In fact, John was sharing with me off air a story about one of his clients, which we won't get into because we don't have that permission, but perhaps one day we could discuss that because it was a um it was a great example of why it's important to get policies in place as soon as possible. Yeah. 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 Um and then you're not stopped out, so to speak, you know, where you can't do anymore. You know, you might want to do more, but, you know, you can't at least on yourself. And, and if people don't know this, by the way, if you have listened this far, you probably, but let's say this is the first episode. If you're approved for a policy and you pay your premiums and then your health goes to shit, well, I can't mm -hmm. swear on this. Yeah, yeah, if your can. health goes <laughs> downhill, uh, an insurance company cannot retroactively yeah. change anything Great about point. that contract. So I don't know if, you know, if we have some, some newer listeners, just to, to keep that in mind. I mean, if, if you were to get approved and, you know, three, four, five, ten years down the road, some bad health catastrophe came into place, as long as you pay your premiums, you're all set. And we've talked about this, you know, at other points too. Those contracts do a great job in protecting you if, if some of those health problems cause you to be disabled. Um, that policy will often be kept in force by the insurance company. So, right, right. Yeah. So, um, you know, in this in this section of the book, he uses the example of a, a father, um, a man who has a has a daughter, and you know he's fifty years old and he's uninsurable, um, and or you could be what they call 
uh, table rated, you know, so it, it just, some people might just say, I, I don't want to pay that much money for insurance. Right. Um, even though the way we look at it is you're, you're building this liquid cash. So even if you're putting more money into your premiums, it's not a bad thing. You know, I've definitely had people get, you know, what is basically sort of, there's the middle of the road of a bell curve, right. And, or it's the it's the top of the bell, you know. There's the average person falls into that group called standard, and then you might have something a little bit higher than that, which means you're you're more healthy than the average person, and then you have something they refer to as substandard or table ratings, right? And I've had clients pay extra, and that's fine because in the end they are they're building this liquid uh cash um capital pool this capital pool of money and so putting more money in isn't really a bad thing uh yeah no, and it's not just about the cash accumulation they're also <laughs> they're being covered buying a death benefit yeah which, exactly you know, that often gets overlooked in the mm. infinite banking discussions but it's yes really important yeah um, thank you for bringing that up yeah because yeah. we do talk about it but we don't talk about it enough publicly i just don't think it gets talk, talked about enough at all really i mean infinite banking is is generally about the you know the yeah. cash accumulation and what you can do with that because that's that's what infinite banking is but we are talking about life insurance and the death benefit is is hugely important to have you know i mean yeah and I don't, I'm not going to, I'm going to try to paraphrase this, but, you know, Nelson talks about that, right? You know, you couldn't even get approved for the amount of death benefit uh, that you could end up with because of the way these policies are structured. No. Right? It's You're crazy. literally, because you keep buying more and more insurance with the dividends, with the paid up additions, you know, which is your optional amount again for those first time listeners. And so these numbers grow to a point where your income wouldn't support it. No, uh, I mean, you, you have it, policies that can start with a million dollars in death benefit. And by the, the time the person reaches, you know, a hundred years old, they could have, you know, $10 million yeah, in death benefit. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> and higher, right? And higher, yeah. Yeah, especially yeah. the younger they are, right? Oh, well, yeah, if you're talking about a uh, someone in their early 20s or even a child policy. Yeah, yeah it's, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's insane. So what But this, there are scenarios where people can't get insured. There is. Yeah. There is. And so in this case, this gentleman, this father, was uh, 50 years old and he was uninsurable. Mm -hmm. And... But he had a 23-year-old daughter. He had the cash flow. He had probably had a job and all that kind of stuff, right? And so he starts putting in, I think, $20,000 a year on a policy on her, right? Now, she can take out the policy. He can pay for it, right? I mean, she has to qualify for it, and that's how it works. Yeah, she has to be a willing participant. Yes, for <laughs> sure. And, you know, basically, you know, 20 years later, he starts to take cash flow from it, stream out, you know, income, whether you want to call it income or I like to call it cash flow, right? And so for like 13 years, I think he was drawing out at that time, you know, this is many, many years ago, but 28500 a year. So he put in 20000 a year for for 20 years. For 20 years, yeah. Yep, and he was so, taking out 28500 Yep, okay. yep. Um, and, you know, there was ways of, of doing it where, you know, he was surrendering some of his paid up additions that he had put into the policy. But what happened was I, he passed away at 85. So, you know, 14, 15 years into it of collecting, he dies. His daughter is the owner of the policy, right? Mm -hmm. So... And she's the insured, right? So there's nothing that has to change hands. This was him just taking income or her allowing him to take income, right? Because he probably paid for it, right? And then came time for, you know, you know, is she going to continue to put money in? No, she decides she's going to let the insurance company, you know, manage this policy, basically 
you know, taking dividends and so forth to pay premiums that might still be due because I think there was still a few years that it was due. But she goes to the age, um, uh, let me just get the, the exact year. She's 70 years old. And she decides to, she's going to stream money out, right? She streams out one hundred and fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars tax exempt again. Yeah, for uh, for twenty one years, she takes one hundred fifty thousand. So that's easy math, right? It's over three million dollars, mm-hmm. um, three point one million dollars, plus her dad. You know, he got supplemental cash flow or income uh, late in his life, right? And so that's what we mean by, you know, two passive incomes out of one policy. So he took out like 350000 She took out $3 million Yeah. From one policy, which we don't know. Does it show the total amount paid in premiums? It's substantially uh, less than, you know. Well, the, the total cumulative premium... No, they don't have a uh well um it was it was 400,000 but then you you have to do some math to figure out, you know, when they were pulling some of the sure, some of the dividends to pay for some of this cash out and some of the um paying for the premiums and so forth, right? But yeah, I mean, it was small compared to this the fact that they could take out almost four million dollars, right? And it was ca- uh, tax exempt uh, cash flow. And Maybe they didn't she- even put in a fraction of that. No, they put in very little, and, and it's really because they put it on the daughter. They yep. put the policy on the younger person that was insurable, and again, he had the means to pay for it, but he just didn't have the insurability on mm. him- for himself. So, I mean, it's just being. It's it's not tricky business. It's the way things are done, right? You he has a insurable interest in her, but again, she can she could own the policy the whole time. You know, it's not like he has to be taking the policy out on her. It's just he says, you know, hey, you might have other things you want to do with your cash flow, but I'm going to put my cash flow and pay the premium. Sure. And here it was a it was a beautiful thing for both of them. Yeah. She, yeah, didn't, she didn't know that probably at 23. No, probably not. But yeah, it, it, it had many, many decades to work for, her, you know, almost 50 years. I remember when um, when I was, our son was first born uh, and it was, you know, right before I'd kind of gotten more into the insurance world. And I, uh, someone that I was getting term insurance from my wife from said, hey, you know, we can get a a, a policy on your son. And I immediately turned it down because I thought that that was kind of a disgusting idea. Why would I want to get life insurance on my son? Like, why would I want to profit from his death? Right. Right. Exactly. Um, it sounds so morbid. Right? It does. It does. But it's because it's you the didn't wrong understand. way to look at well, it. Well, because you didn't, and they didn't explain it either. No, they they're not. A, they weren't an infinite banking person, probably. No. So they didn't think of it in those terms. And I was the same. You know. And of course, we've talked about it and kicked myself, right? Could have put those policies on them. It would have been such small premiums. By the time they got to college age, you know, they could have, you know, paid for everything in college. We could have borrowed it from the insurance company, paid it back just because I had the cash flow. I used the money, you know, anyways, but I didn't have it in a policy. So that money's gone. Yep. <laughs> gone, gone from your system. Yep. In other people's systems now. Yeah, it's in somebody else's beneficial system. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it, it. we talked about this in, in the previous episode. There's the beauty of this is that this accumulation can occur for many decades uh, while still being utilized and not breaking that compounding power. So a lot of our clients and listeners do have kids. Um and they, they're not forced to lock money up for a long time for their kids' benefits. They can use those policies for a very long time, and then they can be left for their kids to use as well. Yeah. It's it, you know, there's, they, they call it the and asset. I mean, it's cliche, but it's true. Mm-hmm. 
Because it's not, you're not, you're not, you know, uh, you're not saying, hey, I, I'm going to basically decide I can't use this money for a very long time or I have to do this. It's, it's, well, you could do both. Right. And exactly. I know that might sound a little bit too fantastical, but it's not. Well, in, in this case, you know, she was in the story we're talking about, she was 23. But if we're talking about, you know, so she's doing this is a is an older child, right? So this isn't really about the same thing. But in most cases, right, if, if it's a juvenile um, and they're a dependent of yours, you have to have insurance yourself. They're only willing to insure the child if you have life insurance, right? Mm-hmm. Because they don't want you just insuring children, right? You know, not that people are going to do anything nefarious, but you know they they could right they, that's because once the uh, the the two year um, look back on these policies right to say hey was there anything funny going on once that happens the insurance company can't ever go back and look it, you know it's uh, three years in if something happens they got to pay it whether you whether you got by got them got yeah. by so, yeah yeah you did something not so great. Uh, to your children, right? So you, just so you know, you, you in most wanna, cases you have to have insurance as the parent. And yeah, then, and if the parent dies, they want to know that the premiums for the kids still can still be paid. That's true. And, and now so they the, have the, the death the life benefit. insurance death benefit is going to assure that. that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And there's so much flexibility. We, it's funny, right? We we don't intend to go down these roads, but there's so much flexibility, right? Even if there was so-called premiums that were due. Because of the, the way these work, the policies themselves can, can start to pay the premiums, right? Mm-hmm. Or you can literally do what they call a paid up, which means says, okay, we're stopping you know, payments, but we're stopping the whole policy. It's fully paid up today, yeah. right? And it'll continue to grow naturally, but it's not going to grow in the leaps and bounds if you were putting in, you know, more premiums, more premium dollars plus your PUAs and and your optional amounts and and so forth. But you know there is a lot of flexibility that if you decided, hey, at some point I don't, I'll just have the policy pay for itself, or I'll do a paid up. You know, you're not as locked in as you think. And no, probably we're gonna do an episode on that. All the list of flexibility, you know, and. We talked so about that in one of the earlier episodes. I yeah. forget what the I think we've was. done so many now I can't even remember them. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, obviously, the yeah, you're right. The, the, the insurance company gives you a lot of optionality to keep that yeah. contract in force, right. um, which is quite nice. It so, sure is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think that's a wrap. It's a wrap. All right. Great to um, see you again, and you too, uh, I'll see you next Friday. Look forward to it. Same. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the ABCs of IBC. If you enjoyed listening, please hit subscribe and leave us a five-star review wherever you listen. It really helps. See you next week. Bye.